Okay, these are the caterpillars of the white line sphinx moth that are now out of the picture. And let's replace them with uh, the adult. So this is the moth. Those um, little caterpillars pupate. And ultimately the chrysalis will have this adult emerge. So here's the adult white line sphinx moth. You'll notice the antennae are not knobbed like butterflies. This is a crepuscular animal in that it does its feeding at dusk. Other members of this family are nighttime feeders. So the moths in general are nocturnal in their activities and the butterflies in general are diurnal or do most of their flight in the daytime. You'll notice the big eyes Compound eyes. Each of those individual eye structures has a large number of little lenses. Okay, we doing you can see the wings. I'm holding on to them. Uh, you might worry about me causing it some grief because the scales might come off. Might lose a few scales, but they can still fly pretty good without the... Uh... Notice the six legs. You can see three on this side. Those are with little hooks on the end. They don't have muscles that tweak the hooks on the end. He's probably going to fly off and um, out the door, but let's just kind of look at him for a minute. It does have two pairs of wings. You might be able to see just one now. I think it's a male because the male has little claspers on its abdominal end. Uh, we had it in the refrigerator. It's kind of cool. The white line in the white line sphinx moth is on the middle of the wing goes right down the length of the wing, the white line sphinx moth. And when this critter is flying, those wings will be moving rapidly, but that white line, you can still see it. His little head. I'm going to try and get his proboscis out so we can look at it. Sometimes he's not all that cooperative. There we go. Little proboscis. You can see the proboscis is coiled. Well, those little hairs came from its body. You can see how that could go down into a flower. What you can't see is the pair of tubes within. So when that goes down into a flower, it can suck up the nectar, which is basically sugar water. So there's the proboscis on the white line sphinx moth. So when it flies at dusk, and the flowers are open. They're either opening if they're a nighttime flower or closing if they're a daytime flower. At dusk, it can get nectar from either one. So there's the proboscis, this long feeding tube, quite different from the jaws of the caterpillar. Okay, well, the antennae, the antennae, especially on the males, loaded with lots of sensory structures. They can pick up molecules of female pheromones for miles. One molecule often is enough to stimulate the nervous system of this moth to be able to locate a female a mile or so away on a desert evening. Females' sensory structures in their antennae not quite so fine-tuned as the male. She doesn't need to. She just hangs out on a twig, produces perfume. He picks it up. He locates her. That's why we have lots of caterpillars out there in the desert. The order name for this group is Lepidoptera, and that word means scale wing. So the wing and body is covered with little tiny scales, in this case, the scales are quite fuzzy. Notice the little leg. It's with those legs that they can scratch the surface of plants and find out the best one to lay eggs on. They can actually taste with their feet. The little hooks on the legs don't have muscles in them. In other words, they can't squeeze them. They can't pinch. They're passive, but they work quite well. You can see it's hooked to this needle, white line sphinx moth, up close and personal.